Hello and welcome everybody. This is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. Today I'm gonna to share with you how you can make a simple pattern in a woven scarf to show off your weft yarn and make it just a little bit more interesting. We're gonna start though with how my planning for this scarf came all about. I have this thick art yarn and I made this in a few episodes ago where I showed how to spin in warp ends that I had left over from previous weaving projects. So this ended up being an art yarn. This is my weft. And the reason I came up with that was for one, I did not know if the strength of it would be strong enough for the warp. And also it's quite thick because of the way it was spun. It is art yarn. It's got the warp ends in it, which make it very chunky when they come along. So it would not fit through my reed. So it is my weft. The pattern I'm working on is to have weft floats so we can show this off. For my warp, it's a hand spun wool that was already green. And I figured it would go quite nice with this art yarn. So when I start a weaving project, I think in the end, what do I want to wear? And will this yarn work good for what I wanna wear? How much of the yarn do I wanna show off? Do I want something big that's like a poncho? Do I want something small? Can it go next to my neck or does it need to be the poncho that goes over some clothes I'm already wearing? So this I came up with, I wanted a long narrow scarf that I could fold in half, put around my neck, sling through. I often like to wear other scarves I have that way. This will work next to my neck because all of the fiber is soft. And I did want punches of this color to show and that's why we're doing the weft floats so that I can show it off. So let's go to that right now and I will show you the weft float pattern that I'm doing. I've gotten started on my long narrow scarf and here you can see how the pattern is starting to develop. I've got my weft floats going on and then a few rows of straightforward weaving. So I'm gonna show you how to accomplish it right now. To make a weft float, you need to place a pickup stick behind your reed and you can make it whatever pattern you would like. I chose to pick up three strands so I would have a longer bit of yarn showing on the weft. So I'm gonna show you how to place the pickup stick now. You want to take your reed to the down position. Now, you have a shed right here. You need to place a piece of paper or something in between so that you are only seeing the upper strands. So I have my handy dandy cut folder here that I use. With the paper placed now, I can see all my strands and you, these are the strands in the slot position. So that's why you want your heddle down and you're only working with the slot stitches, okay? Because they move, they can move the most. When I was warping it, I ran out of green. It's okay because I decided I'm gonna work with whatever I have and I'm gonna make it work. I'm a very freestyle recreational weaver, so it will work. The stitches or strands that I'm gonna pick up are three at a time because I want the warp to show over three strands. So how it's gonna work is I'm gonna have two down, three up, three down, three up, three down, all the way across. And that works out that I end up having two down in this end as well. Now we have our pattern stick in place. When it comes to a pattern row, to create the pattern, your reed has to be in the down position. Your pattern stick comes forward and tips up. When you're not in a pattern stick row, the pattern stick goes down, gets pushed to the back, and you weave as normal. All right, now I'm gonna show you the pattern that I'm doing. The pattern I came up with is very simple. I'm just doing six rows of straight weaving, and then I'm doing six more rows with a pattern stick in every other row. I've just finished a straight weaving row. I'm gonna show you how I do the pattern stick. So it starts with row one. I weave as normal with the heddle in the up position. Row 
Row two of my pattern is heddle in the down position, pattern stick forward, turned up. Do you see how that raises some of the strands? And that creates a shed for the pattern stick row. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go in this shed, the pattern stick shed, and that's how the design starts to happen. That is row two. And you see how it leaves more of that yarn visible, which is nice. You get to see it, makes a pattern. To do row three, we lay the pattern stick down, push it to the back, bring the heddle to the up position, do a regular weave row. Row four, heddle in the down position. Pattern stick comes forward, tips up. Go through the shed of the pattern stick row. Push it to the back. Row five is just a regular up row. And row six is a pattern stick row. Forward tip up, weave through the pattern stick shed. And you see how it makes the lovely pattern. Here we have the finished item. I am very happy with it. However, midway through, I had some questions or doubts and I'm glad they all worked out. One, I did not know if it was gonna be long enough, but it was, and I'll tell you what I do. The numbers that I work with when I'm making an item is however long I want the finished item, I make the warp ends an additional 10 inches longer on both ends. I did that for this, but as I'm going along, I was like, I'm not sure if that's even gonna be enough. As you can see, the way I wanna wear this, it is enough. The second thing is, I told you earlier when I was weaving this that I ran out of the yarn for the warping. I'm glad I did because I intended to make it a little bit wider. And even this, I was worried was gonna to be too wide because it was thicker. I wanted to particularly do this wrap. I didn't wanna like so thick I couldn't do it. So even though it's this wide, I was able to fold it over to make it nice and do the wrap around the neck like I wanted to do. Thank goodness those things work out. But as you know, a lot of times our projects are an adventure, especially when you're going at something like this. There's no real pattern. It's just doing it and of course working on it in your head. But then, you know, you wonder if it's gonna come out. And then when it does, I'm like, oh, that was a successful adventure. So thank goodness. So yeah, it's good. And as you can see here, the weft floats, lovely. Little bit of pattern. You can see that soft yarn in there that I felt was kind of weak. So that's getting shown off. And that was the goal of this. So it worked out. I think one of the best parts of it though, was that it was done in three days. And that is so nice because I've got four projects on knitting needles now that are taking months. And I love those projects, but you're in it for the long haul, like the marathon. This here was like a nice little sprint. Very fun to do. So, and having that nice Ashford rigid heddle lap loom, 16 inches, perfect. Sit here on the couch, weave it away, off we go. But I do love that I can take it around the house, outside, wherever I want. So that little lap loom is quite nice. The additional thing that I wanted to talk to you about today is the community coral reef. And you may have heard about it on my previous shows. However, this is the first time I want to tell you all about it. It is called the Community Coral Reef Project. And the artist putting this all together for an exhibit is Christina Harkness. She's collecting from all fiber artists items that would go in a coral reef. She's going to do a life-size coral reef. But there are three phases to it. There is the living coral reef of bright colors. There is the dying reef of muted colors. And then there's the dead reef made out of all plastic. So she's working on this right now. If you wanna be a part of it, you can make anything that would go on a coral reef any way you would like it. Knit crochet or whatever else you do that would make an item that goes on the coral reef. You can find all this information at coralknitsfiberarts.com. You can read about it, learn about it, and know where to send your items. And it's just really fun. Here's the goal thing. I'm going out there with rehash fiber 
to meet Christina Harkness while she is doing an artist in residency in Washington State. So there's going to be a show where we get to know her and her thoughts behind this project. And then there's going to be another show of the people working to make items for this project. That's going to be really fun and that's coming up in November. So the shows will come out soon after that. Then I do hope when she has the full exhibit in Oregon that I'm able to go back out and get the coverage of the full show. We're going to aim for that. So here's the added fun thing. If you decide you want to be a part of it and you make an item and send it to her where she has it designated, if you like, send me your name, a picture of it, and your contact info because then I can share it on the show. And also when I go see the finished exhibit, I can look for your item and hopefully find it and get a picture of it and just kind of make it full circle and make it really fun. So it's kind of cool because it is community coral reef. We are a fiber community in this world. And so I think it'd be great. I believe that covers everything for now. So what I want to tell you is happy weaving your weft floats and thanks for watching. Okay, if you stuck around this long, you get to hear what's been going on behind the scenes. Here you see the cute video of when I'm setting up for this. I've got all my animals around me, it's great. But what was going on in the last couple minutes of that video, my cats were fighting behind the camera. <laughs> I was on a roll with words, so I wanted to just keep on going and see if I could keep it together. And I did, but they're still fighting, so I've got to go take care of that. All right, thanks for watching.